conversations video and as for another one so here it is and I hope to pointless conversations that we're going to have um, one is called light bulbs and civilization which is the first one and the second will be um, about the expendable about an amazing light bulb and awesome atoms. Don't you feel better just standing in its glowing goodness? Can you feel your whole body reverberating with health and well-being? And isn't it, isn't the fresh air nice and clean? Can't you just feel out of the air, it makes it a lot easier to breathe, and, but presumably, the dust is still there, right? It hasn't actually gone anywhere, it's just fallen to the floor, and unless it's, I'm very much mistaken, that's what dust does anyway. What happens to the dust when it's on the floor? Does the ball clean that up? left where it lands in a perfect white light. <laughs> so now it's far more visible, actually making the room dirtier than before. Like that bulb enlightened me. Um, the bulb gets rid of the dirt with its power of um, awesomeness. <laughs> the power of awesomeness. Yes, thanks to the hardest power of awesome um, atom emitted from the bulb literally incinerates any dust and dirt. It's like the ending from Indiana Jones 1, only on a microscopic level, and with a bulb rather than an arc, the dust is literally incinerated by the awesome power of the awesomenessness. <laughs> Man, you can really see the awesomeness atoms at work. Yes, indeed. That's some good awesomeness, all right. That does 
climatic battle at the end of Robin Hood was a bit unpleasant, due to the way in which 50 plus children are needlessly sent to their slaughter. I must have missed that bit. All I remember is Russell Crowe running around with blood on his face, a lot of fisticuffs in the sea, and Mark Strong fleeing the battle on his horse and seemingly finding an arrow embedded in his neck. Hilarious. <laughs> that was a bit weird. Why would you have a chuckle at the fact that you're dying in a not particularly funny way? Death, especially when it's your own.
there's one more that I'm going to read for you, um, because this is only 11 minutes so far, which is on the fifth element. The fifth element, about train etiquette and the dangers of sitting. on trains, mainly the fact that some people feel it necessary to take up two seats for themselves, even when the train is literally fit to burst with commuters. Oh, don't get me started. I had the exact same situation the other day. I had a long trip back from London. There wasn't a seat to be had. There were twenty other people sardined near the doors. There's some pom-poms sit, sitting next to the aisle, keeping the adjacent seat near to the window to himself. Why? What possible reason has he got for needing two seats? I suppose you said something to him. Well, I was going to. I mean, you're all over the opinions. You're not afraid to make your point heard. Superman a coward, surely this busiest man, surely this busiest man, that's about business really funny, with a Y for some reason, this business man received your full blast of frank, unprohibited rage. Well, like any good Brit, I let my feelings know. Good on you. Yeah, I told him where to get off all night. Yeah, I took him down a peg. I said, told. It was more of a, a stone cold stare. But I, I could tell that the sheer ferocity of my stare had him shaken to its very core. When my dilated pupils. No, the trouble is afoot. I say stare. It was more of a fleeting and bashful glance. But I tell you what, he got the message all right. DD. I assume he did the courteous thing and moved up to let you sit down. He sure did. I say did. It was more. Did you wait until he'd gotten off one stop before you, and then take one of the empty seats? Yeah. But I got one of the seats, though, ahead of anyone else. So at the end of the day, who's the winner here? Not the scummy hoodie, not the smelly tramp, not the heavily pregnant lady, not the genius who thinks it's okay to bring a massive mountain bike onto the busy train, leave you blocking the doors and then sit down and berate anyone who tries to move it but me numero uno the winner got the seat for one stop king of the jungle in your face Darwin or high five Charles Darwin if that makes more sense sorry did you say that you prevented a heavily pregnant woman from sitting down. Yes, I did. Championo. Well, don't you feel a wee bit bad for not letting her take twice it? Take the twice as heavy weight off her feet? No. Why not? That poor woman had been standing up just as long as you, but you saw fit to take the seat ahead of her and her unborn, ch unborn child. You don't have a problem with that. No, what's wrong with that? She shouldn't be sitting down anyway. What? It's bad for the baby's health if the mum's sitting down. There's a risk that it might be crushed in between her thighs, or at least given a little squeeze around the head area. I read that somewhere. <laughs> Enjoyed that, and it was uh, a relaxing.
in way for you to um, get to sleep or, or whatever it is that you, you like to do when you listen to these videos and perhaps have a little chuckle along. So uh, I hope you really enjoyed that. I thought you were quite funny. of uh, Pointless Conversations, the free ebook. Um, I think I'll probably have to pay if I want to get